Okay. Hello and welcome Maybe back to I... the day welcome back to the Gamer's Tale. I'm Trent Gander. Tonight we're going to have a very special D&D game. This is the first game that my brother Ty will ever be DMing. We're not be continuing our Forging the Onyx campaign. Tonight we'll be going on a mission into the wilds. Wild, depending on how you go. And Ty will be DMing for us. We are joined mission over yonder. We are joined by our friends Cody, Q, and Sunday, and of course me. Our other friends aren't here currently. Maybe they'll join us at a later date, but for this special time, Ty will be taking us away to a distant land in uncharted space. Lol. Did you say right, then. I said lol. Lol. Okay, um, well, this will be interesting. Anyway, uh, I'd like to get some ground rules out of the way by saying, uh, thank you for being here, of course, and, uh, I thought there were some things about D&D &D itself that I thought needed a little beefing up or, like, kind of subverting a little bit because I wanted to see if changing them up would make them any better. So I might be talking about certain things about why I made certain decisions about this first session as I'm going along, so if I ever rewatch this, I can figure out whether things worked or did not work properly. All right. So, That's smart. Several, several ground rules. Okay. Potions are going to be a free action, but there will be no chugging. What does that DC mean? ties go to the attacker, so if it meets, it beats, because that's what I'm used to, and I thought that would work quite well. Okay. There won't be any rapery. Uh, whatever alignment you are is fine, as long as you don't murder Hobo or burn down the countryside. And the only thing I think this following rule that a may not get you kicked from the game if you don't abide by it is no party infighting. I'm going to be sending plenty of things at you for you to knock over and arrange plenty of things for you to steal without having to do it to each other. So, I also want to make sure that like everything in the D&D session stays in the session because I don't want anybody freaked out about what anybody did in character. So, I don't want you all to dread this, to dread coming here because of what somebody did that one time or whatever, so. Okay, hmm. Well, this kind of makes things a little shorter because um, a couple of the guys aren't here. That's totally cool. I got to ask you one short question here real quick. Yes. Are you seven. on bodyguard duty right now? Yes or no? Sure. Okay, good. All right, so I'm going to need everybody here to roll 1d6 real quick. I'm so lost, but this is cool. Why did I have to roll the highest? Okay, so we've got... We all add up to four, six. Four, two, threes, and a two. So Sunday's got a four. Uh, Cody and Cody and Q, if you could roll again real quick. That's my three. Okay. <laughs> so and a one for you. Okay. So then it's Trent, and then Q last. A two and a one. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh. For the start of our campaign, I decided, based on the fact that it was a huge, huge trope in D&D, &D, and I wanted to figure out why to not start everybody in a tavern. I want to see if starting something a different way would be more engaging or not, or better or not. So as a result, I want to do something a little different, and I will kind of pull things all together really quickly, but we're going to start with a little kind of mystery at first. All right, so we're going to start with Sunday. Sunday... Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. I did that wrong. Hold on. Hold on. I put you all on the wrong map. You haven't dropped... There's this lady that's been following us around. <laughs> it's circling us like we're prey. I mean, we're not. Okay. Um, I actually try... all need to go... If you drag... You see... No, you have to go to where the... Uh, 
drop you said down menu is. the drop down menu is, and you take that little oh, that bookmark thing, thing and you drag us over here. there. Yeah. Hey. Okay. There we go. Ooh, this you is really see nice. yourselves. That's that's cool. Nope. This is a really nice I, map. I can't see a thing. Is actually, really or are nice. you all? I can't see anything. Have you pasted it? I don't see it on this so, map. When you change page, you have to click on the page you want to go to, and then you also have to drag us over to it. So okay, you so want. Okay, that's what. Oh, th you didn't set it on the map layer. I don't think so. Oh, okay. So you guys are on token. I can see three of you. Make, make sure There's that the this map is on the map layer. Yeah. Because that can cause us to be oh, okay. under All it. Right. There we go. Good, good. Okay, you were under it. You were under it. Okay. All right, so Sunday is going to be... I'll get to you guys all in a second. So Sunday is going to be a little further up, right about here, right outside, near outside the town of Ransom. And, uh, hmm, I totally forgot about that. So I'm just going to have to wing it a little bit. Okay, so you're, it's kind of dusty. This is a dirt road, right? It's the kind of dirt where there's no machinery around, but if the dirt gets stirred up, like you kind of feel it in the back of your throat or like between your teeth, how gritty it is. It, that's how dusty this is. It's not going to choke you, but it's very hospitable either, and you don't really like it. Dang, this place is so, so green. Uh, kind of sucks. And uh, <laughs> as far as that goes, Things are going okay. I mean, there have been some things that you're mulling over that you've been thinking about on your way to this town, basically looking to get away from some other things. So, which has kind of been rough for you as things go. Yeah. And uh, I look down, all right? And a goblin actually has... A goblin's got a hand on your coin purse. What do you do? Is it like a firm grip or? Yeah, he's he's doing his best with his short stature to try to rob you. I'm going to tumble into him and draw a dagger. Oh, oh, he's he's not too tickled by that. <clears throat> Snorkel need shiny need shiny. OK, so he basically now that he sees he's got a dagger, he kind of runs away, but not before. If you could roll me a deck saving throw really quick. Okay, that works. Uh, he tries to kick you, but he's kind of weak, and you're able to swivel your leg. So instead of kicking you in the shin, he kicks you in the meteor calf instead. It's no big deal. All right, so he gets away, but in the he leaves behind a piece of paper it's kind of really sort of kind of beat up and when you pick it up it, it's it's a set of bad drawings it really is it looks like a, just a piece of paper almost like a flyer in the middle of it is a compass rose and in the upper right corner of it it has a crudely drawn chest so a stack of gold and some badly drawn gems with the word shiny stuffs underneath with exclamations. Nah, nah, nah. It almost seems like it's sort of a map. Now, you have actually received your missive, which I kind of had to pull out of somewhere interesting, you know, like a pocket dimension. So I'm going to do the best I can to try to get you over there because most of what's going to happen for you is actually going to happen after this. So the map actually indicates, based on what you heard of this area, which hasn't been very much at all, and this crappy map with the compass and the stuffs actually indicates that it's the temple right over here is where the stuff is. To your east. Did he manage to get away with anything? Oh, like no gold or anything. Like he just tried. Oh, and by the way, after that, as you you managed to catch. Oh wait, hold on, hold on. 
Let me check something really quick. Cody, where are you? Like, shadow me. Oh. Heavy uh, breathing. I forgot. Never mind. He was... He muttered... You thought you heard him mutter and comment about snorkels for some reason or other. Seems like a rather strange goblin, but he didn't steal anything from you. He merely tried... You were merely holding hands awkwardly with a goblin, and he tried to rob you, but he didn't make it. So he's a small child. <laughs> because like, he, you, you didn't stab him or anything. It just—it was just a bad attempt. Very poor. That was like a poor attempt. Shines a fla- like uh, flashes the edge of the knife. Just like don't even try it. <laughs> okay. Right, well, oh, also, uh, uh, would you also describe your character? And I also want to say that I think I'd also made a mistake at this juncture by letting everybody know they could keep their class a secret because I realized that when watching videos and with my own experience, people wanted to know what everybody else's class was so they didn't unconsciously double up by accident. They wanted to spread their focus out as widely as they could and so I realized that that was a mistake. So if you want to tell everybody your class and after you describe your character, go ahead, absolutely. Oh, I, I'm pretty sure... Uh... Mine was already revealed outside of my doing. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, uh, standing at about five foot eight, my character has medium long black hair that he generally keeps tied up in the back. His eyes are a light charcoal, not like just the irises, which kind of makes his skin seem a little bit pale, but in comparison to your average commoner, he still is slightly tan. Uh, he comes across mildly charming, if not a little cocky. But otherwise, he tries to dress unassuming and tries to be... Like, at any given moment, he's going to want to blend into the shadows. Okay, so he wants to keep things where he can get out as quickly as possible. Generally speaking. Okay, cool. In and out. Yeah, no. Keep going. Keep going. In and out. No fuss. Okay. But otherwise, no, not really anything else. Okay. All right. So with that, are you going to go to the location indicated on the crappy map? I feel like that's what you want me to do, but I feel like the thing I was actually wanting to do is like I'm gonna see what this town is. Well, we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> trust, trust me. We'll get to it. We will. I have things planned for you. <laughs> not, Nobody not move. Things, but I have plans. Sunday, be nice to the new DM. <laughs> Nobody move or nobody gets hurt. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, so, yes, I will begin to uh, go cross country. I, will I begin could to... not pull this out of the posterior properly. <laughs> Make not. The cross country to check out this temple. Making sure to go upward every now and then just to kind of keep my bearings okay I, I'll i also read the note as well for you guys once I determine when and how everybody gets one cool which will help you quite a bit I think so okay where did Cody's character go he done disappeared I don't see a dang thing I think thing. he's where in in the character where did you go Cody just took go. I legit can't see a thing. Oh, there he is. Okay. We're going to put you uh, over here for now. Because now we're going to go to you and your story as far as that goes. All right. We're going to... I actually was going to start you in a bar. This is, this is the town of Ransom. You're the hometown boy. Not everybody... Not everybody knows you. You're not, like, super popular, but you're well enough known that people like leave you the hell alone <laughs> because yeah living the dream <clears throat> oh, you know, I'm intimidating AF Courtney freaking all right. Miller no I'm kidding alright <laughs> all right. so uh, after you get your second drink at the bar which I have actually was going to be called TBD Tavern because I could not think of a name for this bar that wasn't a stupid joke NameGenerator.com um, is your friend. Bars and taverns back in the day didn't always have names to start with. The Broken Stool. The 
All right, so tavern. that's quite interesting. I might consider that. Thanks, Q. The corner. All right, so so the barkeep pours you your second drink, but it's, the napkin underneath is a bit thick, and he's. I don't know if he doesn't know what the hell he's doing or what. He just kind of is idly wiping the bar down. And he usually, like, no, he knows how to place a napkin, but it's not really a napkin. Oh. So it's that's that's kind of weird behavior because, like, he's a normal guy. He's not like a super spy or anything like that. So when you pick it up, it's a, a particular note, actually, that uh, would direct you to go to the temple over here and I kind of want to rush through these uh, the other things a little bit not to rush you because I want to actually read the note because I think it's going to make a hell of a lot of sense more and to get you guys to kind of go over there so that I'll help you out also also, would you uh, please describe your character real quick or like take take as long as you want but just like go ahead I'll uh, I'll run over it pretty quick Uh, so my guy's name is Rex. He's a super intimidating person, as you can see. He's got um, a fucking witch doctor mask. Intimidating AF. Also, he's uh, about 30 years old. He's uh, five foot three. <laughs> so, be fucking intimidated. Um, and he's a bounty hunter. So, a lot of people don't know this because uh, he's small until... He's gotcha, so. Oh, and uh, he's a ranger. Yeah. That's all you get okay. right now. Cool. Okay. Uh, also, I just wanted to bring this up for conversation's sake. Uh, the first character I ever played in D&D, I had dressed almost the exact same way in a plague doctor mask just like that so that nobody would see his face. <laughs> plague doctor masks are the way. This yeah. is the way. This is the way, brother. Okay. All right, so do you know the way? we're going to also, you guys are going to be in the same room. I'm going to do the best I can with this. Okay, we're going to go to a nondescript seedy hotel that I hadn't had the patience or to name either. In the, the love, town. Commander. <laughs> love, Commander. Okay, and Trent, hmm? both you, oh, wait a minute. Also, I forgot to tell Cody the note the the note smells faintly of lilacs it's very strange we're all strange mm. down here lilacs okay so Trent uh, there's a brief knock on the hotel room door and two notes slip underneath One landing right in front of you where you are, and the other one landing right where Egan is, wherever he is in the room, which is rather odd because the door is closed. So you will have your note. Oh, so we're actually, I actually am his bodyguard for today. Okay. Fun. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, Trent, if you would go ahead and describe your character. Uh, my character, Bertrand, is about 5'11". He has dark brown almost a cinnamon brown fur all over his body he dresses in uh, let's see he has a dark brown large dark brown coat that goes to about his shins uh, with an open tunic underneath uh, there's a, a necklace or two hanging there in the open uh, V of the chest uh, he has a golden tooth just to the right of his left canine there's a couple of scars on his face, one going uh, from his upper lip on the right side to his lower chin on the right side, and he has a, uh, a scar over his left eye that kind of travels across it but doesn't actually damage it, and his eyes are a deep amber, and he is a tabaxi. Sorry, can you start that? I was stepped away and I just got back. <laughs> okay. Oh. Do it again. Okay, so... Uh, my character is a tabaxi. He is a dark cinnamon brown, so it's like just a hint of brown, just a hint of black. He has amber eyes. There is a scar over his left eye, but it's st- his eye is still functioning. There's a scar from his upper right lip to his lower right chin. He has a golden tooth 
just to the right of his left canine. He dresses in a uh, long dark brown coat similar to a duster somewhere that ends somewhere about where his shins would be. Has a kind of a open grayish tunic that uh, opens in a V. There's a couple of necklaces there. He has rings on some of his fingers and he has kind of baggy traveling pants that end in those leg wraps known as puttees. Oh, okay. And he has a, oh. a small satchel and like a, a backpack. Is it like those pants, like traveling pants, like people from England would wear in the 1880s going on safari or something crazy like no, that where it bunches it up? I think more like uh, pirate pants. The, the, okay. They have a lot of area. Also, his tail sticks out. Awesome. Roar pirate. That sounds pretty awesome. Okay. You? Same for you. Uh, Go ahead and describe your character. Egan is a very short man. He only stands about four foot nine, but he is very heavily built, and he has dark black hair and brown eyes. He looks okay. He's not all that great. He wears um, he's currently wearing some uh, scale mail with images that look very similar to what his image looks like, but he has a his armor actually has this image on it that I just posted in the D&D channel. It looks um, like a bowl. Yeah. Yes. Much, yeah. It's for right. his you would know this, Trent. It's for the mercenary company he's a part of, mm. the Iron Bull. Mm. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Um, right now, Trent, you would see this. Nobody else. He, his skin is solid black. I don't know how long we've been traveling together, or if we just met up in this town. Mm. DM. I thought for sure if the backstory was the backstory that you had known each other for quite a long time. Really no, we we went point. away with that. Yeah, we went away. Oh. No, did you not read our backstories, man? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. He didn't find me as a kid. I'm just bodyguard duty. I, you know, he, I, I got sent to help bodyguard him or something. We talked about this the other day. Okay. Oh, so okay. Want... So that t that totally supplanted the other one. I wasn't I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it did. Okay, that want... was a total supplant. Okay, okay. If you want, we can skip this and you can do mine away. Oh, that's okay. Um, he has a sword on his left hip and a shield on his back. Um, but right now, like I said, his skin is totally black. I mean, like, the sky at night doesn't get as black as his skin. Okay, then. All right. But if you've been around him for more than, let's say, four hours, you would know he's normally tan. Mm. Just the, sign, the look of somebody who's been out in the sun on a lot of campaigns. Okay. All right, then. And okay, so he's a fighter. If that helps, I doubt that'll help anybody. I'm just gonna. No, go. it's okay. That's good. I'm gonna make no. the assumption that your character and mine have at least traveled to this town together. Okay. Yes. Okay. Depending on how many days, you would know his skin changes to multiple different colors. Sometimes it, once a day, sometimes once every few days. Hmm. Okay. Also, um, so, so as you guys, it also smells like lilacs in the hallway as you guys are on your way out, and I will actually read the note to you now. Lilac and gooseberry. <laughs> note says, activity at the temple of Eclaris Maximus has been bothering me lately. Clear it out. If you survive, I'll send someone to bring you to me. Signed, the queen between the lines. Underneath is a symbol, which is the... I try to draw this, but I'm terrible at drawing if I don't have the tool in my hand. I wanted to... You know how water is uh, symbolized by three squiggly lines? Fifth yeah. element, got it. 
right? Okay, think of that, right, like that, where it's elongated, but there are two of them and they form an X. Ah, okay. Okay, that's um, what the symbol looks like. Would I have heard of this person? No. Damn. But you're, mysteriously, your unit and insignia is also stamped right next to the other on your note, as well as if you're a member of a guild or other organization, it, that stamp accompanies it as well. So okay. it's like, this isn't someone trying to screw you. This is legit. Creepy. Also, in character, does any has anybody read the note more than once? I probably would have read it a couple times. Like, couple what times? is this okay. crap? Do I have a note? Yeah. It's the, have a note it's the net map. I probably would have read it once, and if my current employer says, uh, that's weird, or mentions something, then I would read it again. Okay. Uh, so, this is why I was trying to, I had totally forgotten how to do this for Sunday's character. Sorry, Sunday. I should have thought of a better way to do this, as I just wanted to get you over there. So, I don't know if you... I'm going to make sure that this happens to you as well because of what you came here to do, basically. But for those of you who have read the note more than once, you notice that on your left wrist, the symbol appears as if by magic that matches the symbol. That's the X water symbol. But it doesn't hurt, and it's not harming you in any way. If it, I would not notice it. I'm kind of fuzzy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's a it's a particular color that you can see it if you look at it, if you look for it, which you did because you read the note more than once. Okay, okay. okay. Perception and such. Okay. We should probably get going, Egan. Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. Deal with this bull crap later. Right now. <clears throat> right, I'll leave. I'm getting some beer before we go, though. Oh, fine. I get my okay. walking stick and proceed down out of the, the hotel. Are you okay. And I get a mug of ale to go. It always you... smells like lilacs. <laughs> As well. It's very right. strange. Because it's... It's kind of random, but it smells nice, but it's kind of random. So does Bertrand, when he sneezes, he kind of hop in the air? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do I do sneeze at the lilacs, though. Mm, okay. Damn. All right, so, Atcher, where are you, precisely? Have you headed um... out yet? Yeah, I would have headed out as soon as I okay. got that message. There's things okay, to do. Bounces so, to get. You're excited. You leave. Uh, Egan and Bertrand, who's following close behind, I'm assuming? Uh, I would have just started leaving after he got his uh, got his ale or his beer. Yep. Okay, so, so you myself all down. Kind of see, kind of see a very short like cloaked hooded figure in traveling clothes hustling ahead of you on the way out of town nobody I, like looks at him very much nobody stops him either out of character Sunday I'm having flashbacks to our first day on the campaign <laughs> me too <laughs> I'm the tallest man around I'm the tallest man around there's a rogue looking son of a bitch right ahead of me he must be interesting tackle him I need to deal with him <laughs> Well, I wonder where he's off to. Probably up to no good. Aren't we all? Eh, makes life interesting. Uh, it does. Excuse me, friend. What? May I ask where you are hightailing it to? Not here. Don't worry about it. 
What happens if I'm already worried about it? You shouldn't. Because where I'm going is not here. Yeah. And I just kind of walk past him. At the gate of the city. Or town. Whatever the hell this place is. Ransom. It's, it's more like an unwalled town. I was trying to find a special thing to stat it exactly and I failed. Kind of. Fair. Mm. It's like, there's a small gate. It's just, it's not like a fortified city. It's, or it's a picket citadel. fence. Oh, it's God. a picket fence protects the town. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And there's guards. Also, yes. Also, I forgot to say, Thatcher would know this, but I don't think anybody... Thatcher and Egan would know this, but I don't think anybody else would. There's a ginormous tree in the middle of town. It's like, nobody, it's tall and strong and stuff, and like people climb on it and have a lot of fun with it and things like that. But like nobody ever tends it or waters it or anything. And it doesn't seem to get old or withered or anything like that, even though it's been here for as long as anybody can remember, at least 80 years, if not longer. Hey, um, quick question. What is uh, Cody's character's passive perception? Uh, enough. Uh, if it's over 10, he'll probably notice a small ring on, like, the left-hand pinky finger of Egan, which has the crest of a family in this town. Pretty sure everyone has a base 10. Yep, base 10 uh, plus uh, wisdom. So you never know. Yeah, we could have a you number of some people. number of negatives. Yeah. Guys, so you notice a signet ring on the left hand of Egan, and it has the crest of a family of that has has a few of the farms in the area. Somewhat of a noble, not really high up though. I put very little stock in that, and I keep going about my way. I'm falling Bertram, so. All right. We pass by you. <laughs> God damn it. tall people. <laughs> He's shorter than Bitch, you. I'm short. <laughs> He's shorter, but the other one is taller. Egan's, I'm four foot nine. He's getting the shortest one in the party, so uh, that's your quit your belly aching. God Paul. damn it, I'm the tallest one again. Well, well, anyway, five eleven. Barely. Almost He's almost six feet. Now, no, let's not be comparing heights. We always do this. This is a standard rule of D and D: is to compare height. It is. It really is. <sighs> All right, you got me there. Not yet. Okay. So. If that's all through, up, as far up, as that goes, doo -doo. I'm going to bring you to, we're going to go over to, well, this area. Wait, wait, wait. Another wait. close up of this area, which I actually did better on this screen than I did on the next one. See, I, ha I had a reason for my query. Okay. I was going to either climb up to or fly up to an upper branch and try to be like hidden. Are you the knight? Stealthy, hold stealthy. Hold on, hold on there, Bucko. I think I gotta get you to the next screen, and then you can make that decision for yourself. All right, real quick. Well, I'm already decided. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I want you to see how you're gonna do it as far as that goes, because we're not gonna be here. We're gonna be actually over here now. Okay. Can you guys see anything? No. New. New. Okay. How do I? How do you undo select? Fog of War? Yeah, you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. You go to Fog of War in the on the sidebar. Hit, uh, reveal areas, right? Yeah, then you just square it out like you're uh, trying to highlight something. All right, cool. So we got... You can't see anything. All right, so we got here. Found my token, though. There we go. Yeah. You all can see your tokens and stuff? Mm-hmm. I see two of them. Oh, uh, Egan's got a double. I want the token there. You can grab that, okay? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, so we got a bunch of trees here. Whoops, select and move. Hold on. Sorry about that. We got a bunch of trees here for you to kind of like hide behind and stuff. And strangely enough, there are uh, there. 
I just lost it. Hold on, hold on. I think we all just lost it. Here we go. I messed that up. Okay, so here, I also kind of designed this map wrong, as you'll see in a bit, but... All right, so over here, there is a place where there should be two goblins here. Stand and watch. I think. Hold on. Oh, wait. Hold on. I gotta... I see people... I, I see people in a purple box. I came out of the way. Okay, so these... Yeah, I kind of messed this up. The purple box right here is the entrance to the temple, and there are two goblins standing in front of it. This guy with... Hold on. Let me zoom in to see if I can see it properly. One's got a okay, stick, one's got one, a bow from here. One guy with a bludgeon and one guy with a bow. All right, so are you guys are you guys trying to be sneaky or you just want to pop up there and bust them? I'm going to shoot the guy with the bow right now. Right well, I mean, now. What's the order that we arrive in? Okay. And would, Cody's, and would Cody's character have been ended up coming with us once he knows we're going the same way. No. So you would have arrived first. So yeah, we Bertrand and I and Egan probably would have arrived before Cody's character. He probably would have went, let me follow these fuck. Okay, um, so I actually my guy would he's, he's pretty uh one track mind. Okay. <laughs> okay, so longbow, pull 21, so that's, uh, he didn't really, I'm going to rule as far as that goes, he would have been surprised, so I'm going to roll, hold on, let me switch to another sheet really quick, and I'm going to roll, hold on. Do you want me to run you over some physical dice? No, oh, it's okay. Oh god, that was terrible. Okay, roll for damage. Nine piercing damage. Alright. I'm gonna have to figure out how this goes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. With that... I can't give you... What might help is if you have a sheet of paper next to you with all of your enemies in order and put marks with what you need on them and then have like their AC and their health written right next to them. That way it's easy to go through from that. I thought I had had, oh wait, uh, that's one of the things that I had actually forgotten to do. I remember to do everything else but that. Hold on. See, da, da, da. Did you take these boys from the uh, monster manual, or did you make them up? I kind of made them up. Okay, made, made them up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, hold on. It's right here. Duh. <clears throat> Sorry, I got it now. That is a. Mm, okay. I'm going to have to figure out how I want to do this, but I was going to say, that's a fatal blow. Would you care to describe what happens, Cody? Um, well, I shot him right in the jugular, because uh, he deserves to die. So I shot him in the jugular, you know, and uh, arrow goes flying straight through, right out the back, and then blood's like fountaining out, and my guy's like, ah, cool. that's what I meant to do. And I'm going to take aim at the Nux guy, because he... He runs terror. away. He's going to see his comrade figure out what the hell is going on, because he's dead now. Is so, uh, is he running inside, or is he running like, gonna run, away? He's going to run inside. Can I shoot at him before he gets there? No. Oh. He's going to run. He's going to get out of here. And for anybody who speaks Goblin, you're going to hear him shout... Get the others, intruders. 
Everybody else hears nothing. Are we there? Because it sounds like Thatch just rolled up, killed some dude, and we haven't even arrived yet. I know. It feels I like I've sure. been here for a minute, for a hot minute. I for sure you were all there. And sure. then this guy just walks up, shoots the first thing he sees, and it's just like... Murder. Yeah. It's just like, well, I want nothing to do with them. <laughs> I feel like yeah. we just walk up and this looks like we see a man standing over a body with an arrow in it. He's got a bow. So this, this looks bad. Well, I mean, I do need my arrow back, so I am going to go get it. Yeah. Are so, goblins considered a pest in this area, though? A pest? Yeah. Are they like yeah. hostile? Are they considered subhuman? Are they considered just like normal folk? Do we just essentially is this guy doing a great service to the land or is he a bloody murderer? Goblins are considered pests as such because they've been leading raids in the area and so on. We'll get to it. And also, I don't know, based on the geometry of the dungeon, I don't know if you would be able to hear this from inside the dungeon, very deep and very soft you hear screams for help. Snorkel. Somebody help us! That's like in common and stuff. They're gonna kill us all. In common and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. And he said the note that we got from was from Queen Between the Lines, right? Queen, the Queen Between the Lines, yep. Uh, uh, really? This is who we have to work with? Yeah. I kind of look over uh, at Bertrand. start walking inside. I'll work with the much more shady people. You murder before you ask all the time? Who the hell is that? I, I, I'm going to say as I step around. I mean, like, From here? That's not the question. The question is, do you murder as a first basis? Obviously you're not. Goblins in this area are a pest. They are a kill on sight with a bounty on them. Oh, fucking bounty hunter. Fuck off. <laughs> Alright, let me reveal this area. I like playing this guy. He's fun. As they, as, I, uh, I would hold or I have a back. relative mm. distaste for this character of yours. I'd hold, hold him back on. Let him spring any traps up ahead. Uh, I, I will. We just gotta take care of something first. And I go up and I just cave in the skull of the goblin on the ground with my walking stick. I would probably know of your habits. Mm -hmm. Probably had a few run-ins with things on the road. Okay. I'm just gonna look over, give him the once up and down. Nice. Yeah. And I would be going this way. <laughs> Where you going, going Mon Chari? Hey! Did you get a note from Queen Between the Lines? The way away from the psychopaths is where I'm going. I'm just making sure he's dead, my friend. There are ways to do that, which are less... Does your, does your character look like an elf? Yes. Hey, elf! If you're here, you're more than likely part of... The mission from Queen Between the Lines. Whatever this You may is. not like him, you might want to deal with it, though. You can stay in the back. You get a smirk like, I will just as soon put an arrow in you. Mm. Kind of look. By now, his skin has turned back to normal tan, though. It's probably been a few hours mm -hmm. of walking. Mm -hmm. Alright, so. Are you guys going to go in? Uh, before yes. I go in, I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay, and what does that do, real quick? It just makes it so that I'm a little bit... To, it does that. Plus two to AC? Mm, 13 plus my dex, so I've got an AC of 15 now. Okay. Uh, let me... Hold on... There you go, Mage Armor. Okay. Uh, so, when you guys get in here, 
Uh, it's it's musty and damp and wet smelling in here. And also it smells like crap. Because like goblin. goblins, yeah. Because goblins, they're not keeping it clean here whatsoever. Smells like your mother. Also, there is an altar here. Can you all see it? No, you have not revealed the area. Oh, is that was that not included? Okay, let me see. How about now? Whoops. Nope. How about now? Can you see it now? I can see just that. You see this? Yes. Okay, okay. All right. I didn't realize that was a thing. I... It glitches all the time. It glitches all the okay. time. Okay, so this is an altar at for those of you who are locals. And this is essentially for Thatcher. This, this place is kind of... You didn't really go here. This is kind of essentially that one... The equivalent of that one stupid old house in town that everybody thinks is haunted because an old, old man lived there or there were some murders there. You mean, like, since this was a temple, it hasn't really been a temple, quote-unquote, for decades. But, you know, this had gotten broken into, but it wasn't really it wasn't really a problem until now because nobody really knew what was going down. But now that other people have kind of been stirring around about it, there's been a call to go out for people, including you, to go check it out. So... Hmm. This is an altar for, like, votive offerings that people would do to uh to like have the knights help them and so on so that's the goblins hadn't really messed with it at all but they haven't really they haven't done anything to hurt it but they hadn't really done anything to help it either so it's just kind of sitting there it's an old relic it's kind of dusty but it's okay and i mentioned it smells like crap yes you did also uh you can hear i wonder how far that would carry i am not sure you can hear two sets of snoring also. One is very soft. It's like... Very nice and soft and it's okay. But the other one is like stinking loud. But that it's on... I'm not going to try to do that one. I don't want to kill your eardrums. But so when the one is at rest, the other one goes forward. It's almost like a yin-yang thing where it's kind of constant. Where it's soft snore, loud snore. Soft snore, loud snore. And the cries for help have been getting slightly more insistent as well. I'm gonna go that way. Let me assume this is where the door is because it doesn't. Yeah, sorry. This this is the way in. That's why I, I think I actually used this map backward. <laughs> sorry. This this is actually the door. You actually are supposed to go. Uh, I intended for you to go this direction. It's one direction. Game. You coming, Mr. Elf Boy? I, uh, I don't see anything else, but I'm going. I guess he's not coming. Oh, maybe he is. All right. Which way looks? Which way? What direction is the? Are these screams coming from? That direction would be, like, would be like northwest of your current position. So like, it would be here or like way over here somewhere. We can't see that. Oh, sorry. Uh, Gotta zoom way the hell out. Oh. Yeah, All right. Sorry. We should probably deal with that first, Egan. <clears throat> this would be like way over here. All right, there you are. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, I'm still used to trying to maneuver the stuff. All right. Uh, whatever you're talking about, I cannot see. It is, you have to zoom way out. It's like on the yeah, it's, entire edge of the entire map. It would be on the other side of the map, basically. You can still hear it, but there are some things you need to get through and so on to get over there. I'm at uh, 20% and I cannot see it. No, oh, I, uh, I pinged it. He pinged ping it over it here. Right I'll ping it again. Hold on. I mean, I see the ping. Like right over here, basically. Yeah, no. Looking for an open spot in the map, or just no? 
No, it's just a ping. Oh, it's a ping. All right, let's go All take right. care of those people. Well, they may be. Somebody roll perception. I don't care who. Great. All right. Coming in hot. Nice, nice. That's pretty dope. All right, so let me zoom in again. Hold on. Right here mm -hmm. is a size trap with a pressure plate, which has mysteriously not That's been triggered. Rude, so we can, so we can spot like the, the traps. I mean, if you're looking hard enough, anyone can see a thing. I'm just, I'm just gonna say this. He's the what DM. You know what look for? If there's a giant ass scythe on the roof and there's like a little string to there, I think that's a little obvious. I, I have to agree. As someone who sometimes deals with stuff like that in real life, even people who aren't trained could sometimes see stuff. You rolled high enough on perception to uh, see it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Um, you said it's a pressure plate? Yes. I'm going to shoot that pressure plate with my bow. Cause okay. Does it do anything? As you shoot the pressure plate, two sides swing out down in opposite directions. And then swing back up into the ceiling with an audible click. And then nothing. Hmm. Um, do I see you how big that pressure plate is, or is it just like a little one? Or it would be about the size of, well, it would be about the size of one dude. So five foot square, okay. Some that something like that, five dude. between like five to ten feet wide. That actually, so it would kind of, it would pretty well block this area. Whoops. Okay. Is there any other well entrances? So, no. so this. Yeah, pretty much. Well, then. You're not going to be able to do anything without <sighs> well, it again, I don't think. Okay. Well, I'm just going to start climbing up onto the wall and just climb over it. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go back to me being a ranger and track how these guys got across that without them mince meeting themselves. Okay. <sighs> interesting. This is very interesting. I don't know how you got to get across, but you can try jumping. Once Bertrand gets across, I'm going to uh, just kind of lean back and set my foot on the um, pressure pad, see if it goes off again. Yep. We'll have to roll a deck save now. I only put a single foot on the beginning of it. How heavy are you? Total gear. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That's 132 pounds plus... 170, so uh, around total 300 pounds. You'll have to roll a deck save. If that's the case, I'm just going to run across it then. Mm, okay, go ahead. You'll still have to roll a deck save. Yep. I'll give it a try. All right. Nope, I don't get, make it. I just Ooh. take the damage. All right, so that would be... Uh, Four, four piercing damage, which, as I recall, would be one. Yep, I, mean, I take one point of damage and just kind of shrug it off. Hmm. Yeah. All Nothing. Right. You see him walk. You see him run across, put his shield up, and kind of dodge out of the way and kind of take block a small it. slice. You kind of block it a little bit to use the shield a little bit to kind of shift it out of the way as you kind of maneuver over to the other side. It's okay. Is it a nick on your armor, maybe, but it's nothing serious. Hmm. Fun. <sighs> um, 
Did I see how they went across? Uh, or did they just like you, jump across it? Are you watching? No, I'm talking about uh, my tracking of said goblin that ran in here earlier. Oh no, that would have been way too. That'd have been. Way He's just too trying to see if anything disturbed the ground. Yeah, like. Um, oh, there's yeah, there's a bunch of dust, and then there's like right, not dust in be, one spot. There'd be goblin tracks right across here. Uh, but it doesn't like... seem to have done a thing. All right. Well, you said it's a five foot square. It would be like two squares wide. It would be like ten feet across. Yeah, you could maybe you could maybe jump it, or you could try to disarm it, or try to defeat it in some other way. I'm totally gonna jump it. I can jump that in real life. Let's do this. <laughs> Okay, fine. Go ahead. No, I think even I can clear that in real life. Well, me athletics really quick. We'll see. It'll be fun. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, you make it across, and you kind of, you kind of somehow juggle yourself in between Egan and Bertrand, so you don't bump them s somehow. It's rather strange. Egan just kind of, you kind of bump into him. He Egan just grabs you, so you don't fall back pulls you forward. I don't really acknowledge it. I am just ready to keep going. All right. Elf. How low do these swing? It'll cover the whole way. You won't be able to duck underneath it. You'll get cut if you do that. Uh, three foot guy just got hit. <laughs> I'm going to try to disarm it. Okay. Roll a dex, dex check with your tools. He's going to disarm it from all the way from the door. One, to get up one, one, further, one, though. one. You'll have to get up a little further, but from where it is... I was trying gonna... to get my character sheet to work. It wasn't showing me actually any information. It was just white. Hmm. I've had that happen. I've had to close it out and reopen it a couple times to make it work. I did, but it didn't work. I had to edit and then save changes, and then it worked. Well, all right. Oh, wait a minute. One, one, one. Oh, God. <laughs> I fuck. Oh, God. I hope you feel bad, Q. I do. Okay, so, uh, you, you try to disarm it, and you're jiggering it, and you're jaggering it, and it just kind of... I think your hands kind of get stuck with the tools and it trips the trap. Make a deck save. I, I step in front of it and just like kind of grab the blades so that they're not, so that they before don't hit them. You, before you do that, uh, what's your name's character's name again? He hasn't told us yet. Oh, the nameless character, specifically the nameless elf, Nimbly dodges out of the way to plant himself on the other side of Bertrand here without disturbing him uh, somehow. And everybody's okay. All right, so... We're still going to go back through there, so... I'm going to try that again. You're going to try to disarm again? Yes. Uh, can I take 20 on it? It's going to get take no. 20 minutes, man. <laughs> I, you don't have 20 I minutes. Have just, roll, just roll me another one. It's okay. I... All right, that works. You hear a click as the trap disarms, and you get the distinct feeling you will not have to deal with it anymore. I keep, I step forward to try and uh, see what's okay. up ahead. So the snoring is getting louder. Both sets of snoring are getting way louder. Hold on. Can we reveal area? Dang it. There we go. Can you see this okay? Yeah. All right, so basically right in front of Egan here is a dead body of, yeah, right there. It has some armor on it and a crappy sword, and it's kind of, it's not skeletal, but it's dead and shriveled pretty much. The goblins have, goblins or something else, it pretty much worked this over quite a bit. Nah, lock, smack, and him, his macaque. Nope, I'm going to break uh, his skull again. <laughs> Through some ways of going about that. Already broken as far as that goes, but okay. I'm making sure it's uh, just extra broken. Is 
Okay. Can pull on this body. What now, Cody? Is there anything usable on this body? You gonna search it? Go ahead, give it a search. You find, uh, hold on. I got to- Find blood. <laughs> blood on, for the on. blood god. How to make another thing, hold on, hold on. Skull for the skull, bro. You find, let's see. A- yep, for the kitten. A, a bronze helmet, let's say. What's left of it? <laughs> What's left of it? It's pretty beat up. I mean, somebody might want to be able to part that out, you know. Metal is still expensive, rather, in this world. Not prohibitively, but some poor people would still want to maybe do something about that. And like a leather jerkin, just like regular leather armor. It's still kind of beat up, and it's probably bloody, too, and it's got some stabs, but you might be willing to sell it or use it for some other purpose. Any arrows? No. All right, I'm gonna leave it all. All right, so this maybe I should just put this over here. Hold on. A yeah, DMing word to the wise, perhaps revealing how far we can actually see, will help a yeah. lot. It will help yeah. a lot, and we won't be just stumbling over each other as we stand next to these uh, black squares. Like, um, what's going on? Okay. All right. So, also. There's here. Can, can you all see that? Mm-hmm. All right, so here... Half-assedly, though. I barely see this. It's also a... Hold on. Let's see. Right there. All right. There's a set of three torches, and this is where the snoring is really loud, okay? In the center, there is a sleeping goblin. He's just... He's snoring quite lightly he's doing okay he has a fine reddish dust on his clothes though it's rather strange uh, is it this guy yes he's asleep he's not dead he's asleep he's snoring a little bit but he's got a strange red dust on his clothes and he's just got his hands like folded like he doesn't have a care in the world and uh, over here uh, select tool hold on over here are another couple of dead bodies. They're more skeletal. They've got like things clutched in their hands and so on. They're like not skin and bones, but they're just skeletons, like nothing. Also, you're beginning to hear the screams for help are getting louder because you're actually getting closer to where they are. Is as well only... as Sorry. somebody screaming. There's more, lots of screaming. And also, you can hear somebody faintly chanting as well now. Is there oh. any other visible enemies in this room? Not just yet. Should we wake up this place? I think if this one didn't wake up, it might not be waking up. It's really weird to have red powder all over. Mm-hmm. That's not, uh... Terry here. Also, or we can make sure that they don't the, make up. Here he super loud, the super loud snoring is actually coming from. Oh, can you guys see this? Hold on. Maybe you can. You should oh. be able to set the uh, the opacity to what you have as fog of war. Be very light, so it'll be a gray tint over everything. And whatever is gray tinted, we cannot see. Exactly. Okay. So, over here, can you see this? Now, yes. Okay. So, all right, cool. So, this, there are three torches on the walls, which is rather strange because it's rather strange. Okay. I'll, I'll take your another, word for it. Another reason for, another way to say that, sorry. Being repetitious. And the snoring is actually coming from this third torch here. And as... Do you move closer, you see that it's not a torch. It's actually a tiny skull with a flame coming out of its head. But it is snoring like a train. It is not waking up. It doesn't have a hair in the world. That's bad juju. I ain't touching that. No. It's going to go right over here. Yeah, can I go? You know what? What's over here this way? 
I want to shoot the sleeping goblin. You want to shoot him? Yeah. I don't like people behind me. Okay. I'm also going to hit it with this sharpshooter thing to get me a plus 10, because I also don't want to wake anyone else with okay. their things. What have we got here? Hold up. Okay, roll for damage. Uh, 20. The sharpshooter double damage? No, it adds 10. Oh, okay. Five penalty to add 10. Okay, cool. I didn't. That's that's for my own benefit because I've never played Rangers before. It's not like I'm. Well, that's a feat. Like, that's I a really do want to know. That's specifically okay. a feat that he took. So anyone with a bow could, a longbow could have that. Okay, awesome. So twenty piercing damage, or a gun. Yep, or a gun. Fair. Um, okay. Crossbow, so, sling. Twenty damage. That's the fatal blow. Would you like to describe what happens? Nope. Just arrow straight to the chest. Moving on. Straight to the Jump. Back, nailed to the ground if he weren't asleep and he is definitely not waking up and as you hear uh, as you hear that they're shuffling over here and this goblin saying who's there who there Intruder. what goblin yeah when they are still all black over here yeah, this is this I yeah we're staying right here, and we can't see any of this over here. Reveal the area really quick. Okay. Uh, right here. Can you see that? Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Uh, that that's the draw too. That I just put down. That's what we can see. Okay. This. Oh, nice. All right here. Oh. You saw the black line. Okay. Okay. Can you see that? So they've been yes, see, they've uh, been looking at us for a while. <laughs> so yeah, they have. I would like to shoot them. And so they just watched this midget shoot a gras their friend. Full initiative. We are combat. Okay. Fair. Why did I do that? That guy. Can you see? Uh, do you see five guys or six guys? I see six guys. I see okay, because I, I actually I only see five. Ten on your initiative? Too opaque for some reason. There's a dude with a staff right here. Can you see him with the purple ping? I see that guy. And I see so this he's guy. Supposed to be on. I messed up his icon. All right, so we've got three dudes with crossbows. I can't see what that is. One dude with a sword, you do with a stick in the back. Yeah, so we only see five. Okay. I, see, I technically That's see six. six. So it looks like uh, red, green, and blue are crossbowmen. Uh, the blue one, bluish pale one up here kind of looks like a goblin almost, but like not like a goblin goblin. But a ghost like goblin. A specter goblin. And then these two look yeah, like... That guy. Oh, so there's two people in there. Yeah, sorry. It's like it's one, two, three. You're not. Four. Yeah. There are the people we can see. See, yeah. I don't see one here. I see two on top of each other right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can go to. I'll refresh. Let me like. Move okay, now Cody, move your move your circles away. <laughs> and your square. So he, because since he can t touch everything, and move the, yeah. move everything, that yeah. Okay. All right. So can you see all six of them now? Then. Yes. Okay. Um, and if you want to keep track of initiative, don't forget to open up the initiative tracker. Which is the hold on. It's on the left hand Stop side. Watchy. Yeah. Stop watching thing. Yeah. Okay, so we've got three of you in here. Um Listen. last one is Thatcher at eighteen. Okay, See? can I put that in manually? You can. You you right click his token, add turn. 
Okay, right click. Or no, is it the okay, token add, or do you have to do it? Yeah. All right. So and you get I can put that at 18 right there. And you put descending right. turn order. And you can also put all your enemies in there. If you want them all to have the same thing, you can do the same thing. Add, click on each token, add turn, if you want them to have different initiatives. Okay. Initiative uh, checker's gone, by the way. Oh, sorry. Not a problem. You see it now? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, so I need to roll six. Now, I just want to put them all in the same turn. Here is like something that I've seen Trent do, I've seen Sunday do, and I've done. You okay. class them together, so like the crossbow, you'll go crossbowmen or crossbow goblins. Give them one turn together. Um, and then, you know, fighter goblins, one turn together. It makes Caster it easier. goblin. Yeah, it makes it easier to do in mass uh, things. Yeah, okay. Essentially, if they're all attacking with, the, if they all have the same stats, attacking with the same weapon, then you effectively just roll it X amount of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that means I would have to roll just initiative three times for the three groups. Yep. Okay. Oh, I'm back. Okay. So and what you do is just one... like click Ooh. one, one goblin of the type, right click it. Um, yep. Wait a minute. Ah! Oh, wait, this is supposed to go there. Okay. Oh, you just put a shader on it. That's why he looks so weird. Sorry. And then for the melee dudes, I did that wrong. Okay. Trent, maybe you should take him some regular dice. <laughs> yeah. It makes things so much easier having just regular dice to roll as a GM. Yeah, I can get you some regular dice. Like, the only thing I really use uh, other dice for is uh, damage, because generally we're dealing with, like, 3d6s. And then I have to essentially dump all my dice out and get them all together compared to just some d20s. Yeah, I love just having a d20 sitting there. It's, it makes it so much easier. Yes, I have a drawer with... Dyson. Do you want some uh, D20? We don't cent? have as many dice. Got a pound of dice somewhere around here. I've got numerous no. dice. I only have two stacks. Books a million sells dice by the pound. Just so, to... no, no, no. What you do is you adjust it again for the turn order. So you only need to have, like for all those crossbowmen, yeah. you only need to have one token on there for it. Oh, okay. So you know when you get to the crossbowmen, it's all the crossbowmen go at this time. Mm -hmm. And while the two other goblins, the two fighter type goblins have different weapons, I can understand having different attacks or initiatives. Okay, 13 for the melee and for the bowmen, 18. All right. So first up, we you can have... reset it for descending order. Which button do I push for that? The arrow? No, you go into uh, settings, and then there's up at the top, it'll say okay. descending or ascending order. Okay, good. There you go. Good. All right, we're fixed now. All right, so first up, we have Sunday's character. Would it be possible to hide behind the cat? <laughs> uh, no, you're not a halfling. A big furry man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm kind of thin. Not by much. You're a burly man. I mean, technically, it'd be considered cover. Because if I if I tried to shoot, cover's not the issue. Yeah, no, he's trying to the issue. Hide the issue. No, it's he's trying issue. to hide so he can get sneak attack or something. That's exactly what I'm wanting. <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen here. This is bald. Totally bald. <laughs> There's no cover here whatsoever. He knew he knew how to counteract you, man. Oh, you got <laughs> kryptonited. Uh, either way, I'm just gonna fire an arrow at that one. Which one? Hold up. Oh, red. 
No, he's one. He pointed to that one. Oh, he pointed to the melee guy. Okay, hold on. Let me get. Okay, so let me think. Okay, cool. Uh, roll for damage. Six piercing damage. Okay, let me check. Dang, I minimized that. I tootened Oof, it. You tootened it. Tootened. Oh. I love tootin. All right, so you roll a six, right? All right, so he's... He's, he's a not man. Dead. Yeah, but he is looking pretty bad. It's it's rough. You shoot the arrow and it kind of just right into his chest, and it's almost up to the feather. It's almost up to the fly on the back end, so it went in pretty dang far. Pretty far. They squish rather easy. Squish, squish, yes. Is that your end of your turn? That's really all I can do. Okay. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of multi attacks going on right now. Yeah, yeah no one has no one has multi attack at first level except for rogues with two handed weapons, or two one handed Which... weapons. <laughs> I'm not gonna run up there and do that yet. Otherwise, I would. Not yet, lol. Okay. I'll eventually get up close enough. All right. So I didn't put that. I didn't put that on here. Oh, I'm ashamed of myself. Okay. Aren't we all? No. Oh. Very ashamed of you. No, I'm kidding. You're pretty cool. No, I, th I thought I was talking about us being ashamed of ourselves. So we're going <laughs> to have Mage. No. Oh, let's see. I am in the I, forefront. Yeah, I know you are. You can hit the arrow at the bottom of the turn order to get it to the next one. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Keep track. And what's the range? So. Counter spell. Yeah. Where's the measure tool at? Uh, it's the right below. Search. Circle with the ruler. Looks like a weird. Oh, He's about forty-five feet away. Snap to center. Okay, Perfect. that's that's not gonna. All right. So that will. That will end his turn because nobody's close enough to do any real damage. All right. Where does the damage Next face? Off. Um, I'm going to take a, a cool step right here. And uh, I'm going to shoot this guy. So, you shoot the mage, huh? All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to shoot the mage. Cyberpunk comes back, geek the mage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on, Chum. Does it work? Come on, uh, you gonk! Oh, hold on, hold. Nineteen, gonk. yeah. Roll damage. Eleven piercing damage. That is a fatal blow. Would you like to describe <laughs> what happens? Uh. Well, you know, we just kind of went out there. The other team played good, but in the end, we shot him in the heart with an arrow, so he just fucking went down. And then he goes. Uh, and falls over. All right, hold on. Let me go to the token layer. Oops, I did that wrong. We're supposed to do this. We we'll put the X. We'll put the X on him. He's on the big old X for out. Right there. Drag him away over this direction. Whoops. Nice. Drag him somewhere else. And then I'm gonna also take. One step back here. My turn. Okay. Now we're on to the Bowman. Have him. I kind of messed up the circles on this map as well. I will so show you have... a way to fix that later on. Yeah, I. I had looked that up, but then I realized it was a bit late for me because of the fact that I made all kind of drawings on the map to help myself and stuff after yeah, fine. before I decided to size the map. So it went to heck real quick. So five, ten, 
15, 20, 25, 30. And he's going to shoot. Who can he shoot? Should be able to reach all of us, to be honest, with a crossbow. Yeah. Crossbows have a minimum range of 60. Real, tw- real quick? Like 60. 60 feet, huh? Okay. That's, yeah. that's the minimum. Yeah, okay. that's that's where he shoots easily. And then out to 120 to 320, depending on which kind of crossbow he has. Okay. Uh, and then depending on if he's shooting stuff behind other targets. They're lighter or heavy. Uh, I didn't really... I didn't really think about that too, too much. I was if it's a light, it has 80, and if it's a heavy, it has 100. Okay, light light would work for this. It also changes the damage, you do realize. Yes. Oh. Oh, dang. Y'all, y'all okay. need to check out the armor and weapons page for Roll20. I use it all the time, and it's really useful. Oh, so yeah. A, a light is 1 by 8, and a heavy is 1 by 10. Okay. Light, 1 by 8. Heavy 1d10. Okay. I feel like you need like three other monitors for this. Yeah, <laughs> I probably do. All right. So, and he's going to shoot Sunday's character. And let's Do I see. get at least half cover since I'm behind a big guy? He's bigger I than I am? No, we've been over this. This is not... No, this. actually, that would be considered cover. Is it partial cover? I'm, in, I'm directly in front of him. Yeah. I mean, if he's directly in front, if somebody's directly in front of somebody else, unless that person is really short, okay. or the they're going to be blocking the next shot. Sharpshooter. It ignores half cover or cover, full cover. Anything but full cover. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll shoot again. All right, so. It's, a, it's a, Ignore half cover and three quarters. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, so how does that. How does that impact this roll, just so I know? He has a plus two to his AC. Which makes it an 18. Which makes it an 18, okay. So, half cover, plus two to AC. Excellent, all right, cool. And if it's considered three quarters cover, it has a plus five to AC. Okay. Which I don't know what it would be considered. Or a creature, okay, a creature is half cover okay cool all right so he rolls 21 so and you would take Is that plus two give you more than a 21 Sunday no <laughs> oh, it puts me at 18 Ooh. I'm dexterous, but I'm not... Three three points piercing damage. Oh. Oh. Okay. And for the... Oh, I should push the thing down. For the next guy... We have him. I forget which one this is because I didn't label them. Yeah, if you mouse over them, it they'll put matter. a square. Yeah. Okay. So the last yeah. next ones are green and red that are next. Okay, move over here. And and I'm gonna shoot. He's gonna take aim at Rex right here. I'm trying to snap to. Just trying to get the angle down, so that angle would be okay. Yep. Okay. So. Does a 19 meter beat your AC? It does. Okay. You take three points piercing damage. Three. Okay. Okay. 
And last but not least, I'm going to have a green fella. They're all green. <laughs> the That's racist. That. Hey, I got you. I got you. Cyan guy? Green guy. Yeah, no. green okay. man. Ba, da, da. He's green gonna, dot. He's gonna take aim. Take a shot at me. Mm. Kind of short, stocky bastard with a shield and a sword. With you going, are mm -hmm. rather a threat, so yeah, let's do it. You got another nineteen. It meets my AC. Okay. So you take... It would be... Just tell me the damage, I'll do the mitigation. Uh, two, which would be none. Right? I don't take any damage. I so block it with my shield. If he shoots at you, bam! It block, you block it with your shield and a tink. He swears in Goblin. <laughs> and that's the end of his turn. <clears throat> now it's Bertrand's turn. Oh, that wasn't very friendly of you. Uh, I think we're going to have to change that, and I cast Firebolt into Blue Man's face. <laughs> okay. Firebolt. Mm hmm. Does a 20 hit him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't see your damage. Does a 20 hit him? <laughs> I don't even see your roll. It takes two you damage. Dice? No. Oh. I might have. It should be right there. Is it slow? Do I need to refresh? I think I. Yeah, because I mean, I can't see your roll. There, okay. there it is. Here we go. Okay. It took a while to pop up. Okay. Yeah. Two, two fire damage. He just kind of. <clears throat> he's rather surprised that something that looks like you is shooting fire everywhere, but otherwise he is alright with it. I suggest you go down, boy. Bertrand, step back. Hmm. Fine, fine. Well, I'm gonna take a step behind my squat companion because 5e <laughs> allows me you to can, move. You can fire over my head. And I give you half cover. <laughs> If I lift the shield up, I can give you three quarter cover. <laughs> standing behind a safe. Mm hmm. <laughs> okay. Is that in your turn? It do indeed. <laughs> By the power okay. of Tootin. By the power of us right, and this tiny man in armor. <laughs> I am half cover. Now the melee guy <laughs> kind of gets over here. 10, 15, 20, 25. You can't really do too much because swords. So, yeah. And then we've got... I still don't know what the heck weapon I gave this man. That's a club. Yep. Okay. A so... Club. So that's a uh, 1d4, man. if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, yes, club is 1d4. I cannot turn him around. Spin me There's, right yeah. around. Uh, usually what happens is it has it, the square placed in such a way that it's overshadowed by one of the other buttons, and I can never grab it. All right, so here's a little word of advice. For moving the people around, don't use the measuring tool. Each square is 5 feet. So you can just count out how many it is. So if they have a movement of 25, just count five squares. I'm, okay, it's messing me up because of the fact that I messed up the map drawing. Well, no, you can just drag them to the next square, and they'll automatically dump into it because that's how you have it set up. Yeah, like, I mean, since I'm they walk to the trouble, grid. I'm mm -hmm. having trouble actually seeing the lines because they overlap. It's, it's, it's not necessarily lines. It's like, okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, like we snap uh, tokens. Yeah, token stack to grid, so use that yeah, to your advantage. To so like, even if I'm only halfway there, it immediately like pulls me to it. Yeah, that'll help you a lot, and it'll speed it up just a little bit. Okay. All right. So that's it for him. 
Quick well, question. I'll ask, I need to ask Trent. Mm. Heavy armor, that reduces my speed by 10, right? I believe it reduces it. If you are proficient in it, it does not reduce it at all. That's a 3.5. Oh, okay, good. I just wanted to double check because then I do have my 30. I think it moves, I think it drops it by 5 if you're not proficient with it. Yeah, I am proficient. It's a great so thing now about my turn. I take a, one step forward and then I go, I try and go thwack. Okay. One. One. Go ahead. One. So can you <laughs> this time for attacking? What do we got here? All right, come on now. He waits. 16, 16 hit. It does indeed uh, roll damage. Ten. Ooh, 10 slashing damage. That's the fatal blow. Would you like to describe it? He can just walk. He can just take a step forward. Swings his sword to the side and just rips open the goblin's throat. It falls down, and he steps on top of its dead body and goes, "Next." All right, you'll have to move yourself. Hold on, I need to get that corpse out of the way. Making it a corpse. There we go. Can All I give right. an intimidation if we're just walking, taking one step forward? Slicing open his throat and going next to maybe Three. impose disadvantage on their next attack. Uh, pick one. Um, um pick I one. will pick one goblin, whichever one you want. Um, the other melee one. Now just look at me and go next. Ooh. He's kind of shaking in his boots, even though. There's torchlight and stuff, which is kind of weak and such, but you can I think you can see him sweat a little bit. Okay, so if <laughs> if you're using the actual rules, he needs to make a wisdom save against the intimidation. Yes. Wisdom save. So that's going to be whatever his base wisdom is, plus any proficiencies that he might have on a d20. If he's proficient in it. If he's proficient in it, which I have a feeling he's not. So it's considering. Good. He, he he rolled a three, so he fails miserably. He just fails. So that would impose disadvantage on his next attack, so I believe, correct? Okay. Uh, I don't generally use intimidation, but I would assume it would have uh, something true. for... I would probably say it's similar to a fear aspect, so it would probably be disadvantage, but probably only for one turn. But yeah. I'm not the DM. You should that'll totally be, That'll be my his feet. next turn if he gets one. If y'all don't rip him to shreds, which I'm fully anticipating you probably might. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, that is the end of my turn. Yeah. All right. Sunday's character, you're up. I was hoping he'd step five feet further forward. I'm gonna draw both my rapiers, take my full movement action, then attack. Uh... How many feet is that? 30. 30 feet? Okay. Hold on, let me measure. Okay, 30 feet works. Do you have the dual wielding feet? Shouldn't need it. They're both light, they're both light weapons. Rapiers are light? Yeah. Rapiers, Rapiers should are... be light, yeah. Okay. I, thought. I was just I making just sure because... Best. Is a finesse weapon. Uh, it is finesse, but it doesn't. S All right, let me check that out. Because otherwise, I would have equipped every single rogue I had with two rapiers. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's see, Marshall. Rapier. Nope, it is only a finesse. Yeah, so it has to be a light weapon. So your second one, I think, okay, it has to be no, a I'll short put sword. A dagger in the other slot. <laughs> Okay. Simple enough solution. Save, save us some time. Those attacks do not hit. All right. No 
to self. Threshold's at least 12. Or 13. The limit was 26 nuggets. <laughs> no, the threshold is pro- between 12 and 16. We know 16 hits. Ooh, uh... Is that the end of That was turn? a good crack. Yeah, that's all I can do. All right, cool. All right, so he's dead. Oh yeah. That was good though. That was good. And uh, now it's Rex's turn. You're up. Uh, make sure I got line of sight on this boy up here. I'm pretty sure I do because I think he's a, yeah. So that guy right there, Mr. Red. All right. I'm shoot him. Ready. Ooh. Roll her up. Nope. That does not hit. All right, I'm gonna finish my turn. Red you queue up, up, oh. up a longbow, shot him. It bounces. It goes wide and bounces off the wall. Which I actually have to describe to you guys what's on the wall, but I figured it would be better for you to uh, finish combat first. <laughs> I yeah. That would... mm-hmm. After everything calms down a bit. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna end my turn right here. Okay. You smart, smart devil, you. I admire that. All right, so crossbowman. So, since Sunday's right up in his face, he gets disadvantage on the attack, right? Crossbow guy? Uh, they have, I thought the, has does something update when I wasn't seeing it? Because for me, uh, Sunday's all the way back here. All the way back by. So these characters right here. So from what I'm showing, I shouldn't get disadvantage, nor should he get advantage because. Uh, does he get disadvantage because of how close he is? If to he you? if he uses a ranged weapon at point blank range, he has disadvantage. Okay, mm. that's what I had figured was the deal, but I wanted to make sure. There are feats to get around it for crossbow, but I don't think he had. Nah. Yeah. These guys are pretty well run of the mill. It's okay. They don't have that junk yet. Not going to live very much longer anyway. As far as <laughs> yeah. Goes. Well, so, okay. Blue guy is going to attempt to shoot somebody's character. Is it been. Why is it not doing that? Doing am what? I doing this wrong? Doing what? Or if I am, hold on. If you're trying to get it to roll so that it has both of those at the same time, you're going to have to make a, a f- full-on token for them with preset up attacks. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to so, have to double roll. Okay, I yeah. double rolled, and he does... He, like, it, it like totally misses you. He's, like, freaked out, and he's trying to... Sw- the crossbow wiggles from side to side, and he just kind of shoots the wall. Nothing happens. Um, I do have a question, though. Don't they have to take a full round action, reload a crossbow after they fire? It, it, hang on, let me... I have the... Uh, it should be yes. I think, I think it is le- yes, unless they are uh, crossbow specialists. Which, I mean, if you want to make them that, that's completely fine. Hmm. Which is, which if... Them. Go ahead. Which is the... The crossbow is just a regular crossbow, which is the light crossbow. It is two-handed, and it has loading, which, according to the rules, they go up to where it says should say loading, because of the time required to load this weapon, you can fire only one piece of ammunition from it when you use an action, bonus action, or reaction to fire it, regardless of the number of attacks you can normally make. Okay, so... Can you reload and bonus action to fire? Yeah, so it would so generally how I rule it is that I have an arrow or I have a quarrel in the, in the crossbow twang. The bonus action tends is with uh, crossbow expert is I can reload as a bonus action. Otherwise, it's twang. I'm going to take my next action to reload it, mm-hmm. which is generally why most uh, crossbow people will have crossbow expert in order to make them effective and fire each and every turn. If you have crossbow expert and you have a light hand crossbow, you can fire, reload with with, uh, the open hand, and just keep firing until you've run out of uh, attacks. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to make just one of them a crossbow expert. Cool. He studied a little bit more than his fellows, but the other guys are just total noobs. Which is what you would give crossbow men, to be honest. Very true. Total noobery? Yeah. Crossbows are a lot easier to use than longbows. They take a lot less practice. They're, they're like guns, but they shoot arrows. That's okay. why they went to crossbows a lot. Maybe we'll talk All right, so then that indicates that Red will be reloading then. Because he's got nothing. And green is going to be able over. To fire. He, I still cannot see that snap to properly. And it's down. Um, it doesn't do snap to, it just snaps in. There's no indication, it just right. falls so, into the spot. So, if he is an expert, he can reload an attack on the same turn. Correct. Any noise? Okay, I'm going to have him, let's see. There's a truck backing up, that's what he was honking his horn. Oh, okay. I'm at a steel mill. Shoot. Uh, let's see. I don't even try to shoot. Just, the one who just tried to get his butt. Or the one who just killed the other guy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to shoot the one who's going to was trying to shank him with a shank. Shank his buddy. All right, so I'm going to make this a lot easier on myself and copy it. Okay, so for that, a rat, okay, pretty sure 23 hits you. Mm -hmm. Sunday, I mean? Yeah. Okay. And you take three points piercing damage. Okay, then the other guys, they're they're busy reloading. They got nothing. So we're back to Bertrand. Kitty kitty. Hey, yeah. Yeah, kitty I, kitty. I, kitty. I, I, I'm trying my best to save all those silly puns for later. Believe me. I'm going to take a step to the side, and I'm going to cast Firebolt on this remaining melee guy. Okay. Roll her up. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Making sure that went nice. Okay, roll for damage. Ooh. Okay. Almost max damage. I'm nice. a cantrip. <laughs> That's actually pretty dope. All right, so that is the fatal blow. Would you like to describe what happens? I reach into my waistband and I whip out my uh, small wand and the. Uh, Firebolt blazes out and just takes out the middle of his face and there's just this blazing hole straight through the center. Through both sides. And smoking corpse is, uh, falls to the ground and he is out. Is that so your turn? My turn. I'm going to yeah. uh, take another five foot step and just get a little bit closer to my guards. Okay, so yeah, the melee guys are dead now, so yeah, we can skip past those. I believe All you right. can actually remove them from the... You can remove them from the turn order. Oh. You just right-click their image or something, I think? I think you have to go in something like that. Okay, if we go to settings, mm, turn order settings, clear the list, add a label, mm -hmm. alphabetical, Mm. But uh, Egan will look at the elf and go. All right, I'll just pass it. Elf. I'll just pass on that. Do you want help, or do you want me to take out the other? Kill the others, please. <laughs> Kill them. Kill them real good. I'm at twenty-five <laughs> feet. 
put it next to red, and then I will go back them. Nope. Uh, you try There's to swing one Sunday. Hmm. Try to you try to swing it in, but he just kind of leans out of the side a little bit, and it's almost like you were trying to hit yourself, but you stopped yourself just in time. Okay. And he smiles a greasy smile at you, but says nothing. You're gonna die. I will use your eyeballs to you first. End of my turn. All right. Turn these characters up. I'm just gonna try to kill this one. Alrighty. Roll away. No. That, yeah. The rapier does not the rapier does not hit. The dagger does hit. Roll for damage. Four. Okay. So you've got him, you've, you've hit, you swing the rapier and he kind of faints out of the way, but then you see where he's going, so you stab him straight down with the dagger and catch him. He's looking really bad, really bad. I'm gonna do the one last thing I can do and regain one hit point and then, you done? Ah, yes. I remember now. Sorry. <laughs> I, remember. I remember now. I'll kill yeah. you last. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so he's gone. The wizard's gone, right? So now it's return. What's up, man? Uh, we're talking to me or something yeah. else? Yeah, you're up. Oh, it's your turn. You you glitched was... out a little bit. The wizard's gone. Now the wizard's on. <laughs> he's on a yeah, I heard what's up, man, and I'm like, oh, he must have had someone come over. Um, we don't get visitors at this house. <laughs> no. so, uh, Egan is short, correct? Yes, but goblins are also short. Uh, you would effectively have to overcome his light cover. Blocked. Light if cover. he's blocked or not. Would it be you blocked would, or would it be cover? He'd be given cover. If you're shooting from this guy, he's, he's cover. Wait, you Egan know. is four feet tall, right? Four foot nine. Four nine. So if these goblins are like three, three and a half feet tall, the screams are getting rather insistent too, by the way, for help okay. and such. Kind of so busy, you know, man. I had to put that in there. Atmosphere. Is All it right, the... I'm just going to shoot this one. I'm going to shoot red. All right. Uh, where's that? There it is. Boop. And I'm going right. to do the plus 10. Minus five brings it down to eighteen. So that's to work. Yeah. Go ahead. Roll for damage. Sixteen. Total six plus ten is sixteen. That just rips. I want to try to do this one. That is the fatal blow. So you shoot him. Egan, you see his arrow whip right by your shoulder. You can kind of feel the air from it. It sticks the goblin right in the eye, straight through, almost to the feathers, and he just crumples like somebody just pushed him <laughs> down by an invisible hand. He's just out. Right, goes, oh, my soup is ruined. <laughs> my soup. I'm gonna move up to about yeah. here. Okay. Is that in your turn? Uh, yes, yes it does. Okay. So. Uh, all right. So next is the crossbowman here, and he is going to. Uh, that messed up. He is going to attempt to shoot you. Twing, twang, I was down in a game. All right, so I'm gonna just double roll this because, because, because he is not within five feet of him, so he is not Yay. at disadvantage. Uh, he, he's got the feet as well, so it wouldn't uh, mm -hmm. be advantage or disadvantage, anyways. Okay, so it would just be a straight roll. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's All what right, cool. crossbow expert is so great so for players. He rolled. He rolled kind of direct, so he sights up, tries to shoot you. 
and just kind of rolls directly over your head. He has bad aim today for some reason or other. It's just nothing. Nothing happens. And he reloads, and that will be it. If you uh, mouse over my token, my AC is on the in the blue circle. I got you. Okay. Cool. I'll do the same. And then Mr. Blue. Yep. He's... Oh, I forgot about that. Is he also an expert, or does he have to reload? He he would have to reload, but he's going to take the disengage action. Which goblins can do. Yuck, 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 yuck. Because they're cowards. <laughs> they're smart. <laughs> so he won't attack anybody, but he's like trying to feverishly knock the quarrel, like like a crazy person, he's like sweating and struggling, and he's muttering under his breath, and he's having a hell of a time. Hmm. And that will be, oh, so he went, he went, so those guys are dead, and it's Bertrand, I believe, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to shoot at blue. All right. Seven does, does not, not hit. Uh, blast. Kind of muster, you muster up the fire bolt and it just kind of dies. Like you were trying to light a candle, but the candle's on the end of your finger and it just blows out. Okay. Uh, I move up over to here just so I can kind of use people as cover. All right. Yeah. That works. At the end of your turn? Yes. All right. Cool. Egan's up. The One other two are forward. dead. And all right, does not hit. It does not hit. So you try to swing at him, but kind of swing over his head a little bit. He's he, he kind of like reflexively feels his scalp to see if you cut any hair, and he's relieved to know that you did not indeed cut off his hair. But otherwise, he's unfazed and unharmed. Okay. Is that it. Yep. All right. Mr. Elfio. Sunday, Mr. Oh, Elf. I'm going to swap back to my bow and then shoot at him. Green. Blue. I'm going to swap back to my bow and then shoot at green. All right. Go ahead. All right. That hits. Pull for damage. I'm going to find a thing that's not on here. Seven. And because I uh, an enemy within five, or ally within five feet, sneak attack. Ooh, thirteen. Oh, sneak attack. You have so an it's... ally within five feet. You. Yeah. You're Last within five feet of my target. Here. No, they, shooting they have green. to. They have to be within <laughs> five feet of. My... Yeah. He's shooting five. green. It's all right. You got it. It's all right. So seven plus six is thirteen. 13. Math is hard. All right. So you shoot at him, and the arrow goes right by Egan again, right into the goblin's chin, straight through and through his chin and his throat. And he like, oh, eh, and falls over dead. Okay. So now it's Thatcher's turn again. I kind of wanna. Want to move well, I guess he's moving. It doesn't don't matter. Want to hide behind the plague doc, do you? Come eh. on, dude. Yeah, I'll just let him go because he's gonna move anyway. <laughs> Are you going to be chasing each other through the dungeon like little girls? Hey, I'm less than half health. Thank you. All right, fine. I'm just asking if you want to go running around after each other. That's all. <laughs> So, uh, Rex, I guess the Rex tried to shoot a blue. Yeah, it didn't work, more than likely. Oh, okay, sorry. I was trying to figure out what was what. Yeah, that does not does not hit. So now, <laughs> Blue's turn. That's what you did there. Blue's clues. It's, it's funny. All right, so now it's crossbowman. Oh, our one remaining crossbowman again. Ha 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 ha, etc. And he's gonna shoot at Rex here. 
So I'll do a double. <laughs> oh, that's just going to be a straight roll. Uh, he tries to shoot at you, and he shoots wide again. He's kind of freaked out from having to sweat himself to death almost and reload and everything, and he's just sweating, sweating, and sweating. The man's practically bathing himself in sweat over here somehow or other, and he's really freaked out about the whole thing. But, oh, that's right. He have to take his next turn to reload. If he gets another turn... It's personally, he's looking kind of bad as well. It's like kind of like sweat mixing with dirt, his own blood, and everything else. And he just kind of messed up. He's regretting his life choices, but other than that, you know, things were going okay at the beginning of today, and then things went to heck. So, yeah. Other than that, Bertrand, you're up. I'm gonna go scoot, scoot, time to toot. Get up right up in his grill. And it's time to shock that grasp. Okay. Touch spell. All right. Awesome. 18 hits. Roll for damage. All right. So six lightning damage. You feel lightning go through your fingers and you kind of grab onto the goblin's arm and he goes. Ehh! And falls over dead. Oh, man. Wishing, so wishing to every god he knows. That he had stayed home today. Damn, I was hoping to grab onto his face and just go. Dah! I'll work on it. I'll work on um. it. All right. So, I'll explain a bit more things here. All right. So over here, we can't see that. There is a plaque mm -hmm. that says, "To the truth, I give my loyalty." Okay, Sunday. What you can collect that? those. And over here is a set of like paintings or carvings on the walls with knights. They're killing goblins, they're killing orcs, they're killing all kind of like green scaly monster type things. Did you say to the truth I give my own? To the truth I give my loyalty. And then wait a minute, hold on. Gotta get him. Is this him? Hold on. Am I me? Are you you? I think Are I we, messed we, we? up. I think I messed up what was what. We, we? We, 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 so we, we. we. Do, oh, you're fucking pretty old, we, so. We, we, uh huh. What I'm going to do now, okay, you all hear heavy. Little thunder! <laughs> heavy thuds as someone is walking walking and then hold on walking and then like sniffing hmm. Sn oh. sniffing hold on wait a minute here we go okay walking and sniffing he said rock smell blood Goblin blood. Ugh. And through the over in the back, what is this? Why is this not doing its thing properly? Welcome oh, to roll twenty. <laughs> in the back, you see. Can you see this character? Yes. A character. Okay. Yeah, I see that. I see those two guys too. It's a is a bugbear armed with a two-handed mace. He as says, soon as I see that, I, t I go running over this. You die. You kill Grox men. Is he going to be monologuing for a minute? Hell no. Uh, you sly dog, you. you caught me monologuing. He wants to kill you. <laughs> Jet. I was going to say, I would like to shoot him too. Um... Yeah. <laughs> I would say for this, if we did have a little bit between, we should probably reset. Mm hmm. Turn order. Yeah. Okay, so I can push a button to wipe that? Yeah. yeah clear turn order. It should be in the settings. Okay, move all turns, clear list. Mm hmm. Clear list. Yep. 
All right, we're out. Click on our tokens. Go to our character sheet and hit initial. Do we mm. have rolling hot tonight? <laughs> Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> seven, two. Sunday got a fifteen. Nice. I'm squishy. I should go last. <laughs> How did Sunday's character get 20, though? Plus 5 to its initiative. Yeah. I have Oh, I, I have pretty good dexterity. Initiative the first one. It's all the 7. I mean, you can change it to that if you want. Uh, it just... my it, There was no token on there the first time. Yeah. I understand. It happens. It happens. So I was just doing it to where there was a token on there. I'm kind of sad I don't see my initiative token, initiative button up on the, by the arrow. I may have to set that up specially. I just like going on the sheet because I find it more okay. aesthetic. So I'm pretty low up. Yeah. Huh? What? All right. Everybody's rolled up? Yep. Sunday, it's your turn. I'm gonna shoot at that one and then step over here after. All right. <laughs> well, you need to shoot first, yo. Yeah, I'm giving you a synopsis of what I intend on doing. All right, excellent. My synapses. Okay. Never mind. They're firing. What do we got here? Hold up. It's a big old no. That's what it is. It's a big old no. no. I don't have advantage. <laughs> you uh, you draw your short bow, but then you kind of like fumble the air when it kind of ends up in your hand like you were trying to fire it but you didn't quite make it oh, so good. things kind of get tangled up in the string and it's a bit of a mess and a poor bow though <laughs> All right. does that end your turn that'll be my turn alright now we're going to move on to this fella hey there big fella ranger boy all right, and he's going to attack Egan because he thinks he's hot to trot. It sounds bad in this context. No. Hey, you hot to trot? Hey, you know what? He, uh, he, wants, to shoot, he no? wants to shoot his shot. I bet, I bet he shot. never admits, huh? 23 hit. What was that? It's 23 hit. Uh, yeah, it does hit. Okay. You take... Give me the give me the image and I'll do everything. Oh, it's it's a one. He rolled a one. I got. So he's he swings your sword at he swings his sword at you and you just kind of maneuver it out of the way with your shield. No damage. I love this feat. It's my feet. My feet. Five and fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. This other guy's gonna do the same. Go right on ahead. tries to swing at you but he just kind of like swings at your arm but it's vertical as if he's trying to like chop wood and it just doesn't do well at all <laughs> no damn it. he missed he missed everything rather pitiful but he missed all right Rex you're up uh how how big is this room does this room uh, it's, it's gonna... Room at the temple, so if we take each square for five feet, this hallway is about 40 I'm talking to about 60 over here. Is this all the room, or is this like the edge right here? Where? Uh, the far left edge is at the end of the room. No. Can we see that? Because we can definitely see that. Yeah, same thing with over here. There's okay, more over here. All right, there's nothing over there on the right, but on the left there is a bit more. Because right, I would like to uh, take full advantage of the space, so I will. I'm going to be moving that way in a second. That's why I was asking. So I'm going to take a shot at old bugbear here, uh, and boop. God damn, I suck shoot but it goes over his head he also feels his hair and realizes you've kind of given him a haircut by accident but it's been uneven he's quite sad by that fact 
He is upset by his haircut. He would <laughs> like to think you're manager. Mm-hmm. But and then bash him in the head. Lol. Okay. It is now the bugbear's turn. So come on, he's gonna, ugly. He's gonna come right over here. You first, he says. I did I have him on the wrong layer? Do you actually do you have your selected move selected? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Um, here's the thing. Hmm. You can't push someone. They're not, they're not small enough. Oh, so he was here. He can't go through there. Mm-hmm. Right. He can't go through so there. So if, if he was going to do it, he'd probably want to go here. To the right. 5, 10, 15, 20. Technically, he could just stay right behind them because if I remember correctly, bugbears have a 10 foot reach because they got them long ass arms. They do have long ass arms. So we need to cut those long ass arms off. Yeah, well, all right. So he is going to attack you, of course. Let me. I did that wrong. Uh, that's not going to be what I want. Fuck you. The only thing I see with bugbears, it doesn't have a melee attack. Um, it doesn't have like a. Uh, barehanded <laughs> but it only has five foot reach I'm thinking of the the class then the, ra- the player race yeah all right so he rolls to attack and hold on oh hell with it he he winds up with his mace and he just ends up swinging it over your head like it was <laughs> the ball and he totally missed the ball T and everything else that haircut. I just stuck my head a little bit. Hey, this uh, haircut's pretty good. And that ends his turn. Now it's Egan's turn. I'm gonna go after the one who just tried to give me. All right, so the goblin directly in front of you, yeah? No, the bugbear. Oh, okay. Knock him over. There's a 14 hit him. Let me check. 14. Chickity, chickity. Oh. Go ahead, roll for damage. I just... Eight slash him. He, he takes it. He's a bit surprised, and he's kind of cut up now, of course. Really cut up. (laughs) And he's not too tickled, none too tickled about it. (laughs) That in your turn? That is the end of my turn. Okay. Now we're up to Ertrain again. Yay! Okay, so I'm just going to take a five foot step forward and I'm just going to shout, hey, oh, you're over there, fall two, and I'm going to cast a magic missile. Two uh, two bolts are going to go into uh, the bugbear and one just to his comrade, just to to his, what would be his left. So just below him on the map. So, the guy directly right in front of. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Roll right. away. Okay. All right. So the first guy takes seven, and the last guy takes five. First guy takes seven. Okay. Oh, nice. And then you go five, like ten, the fifteen. The last guy 20. takes five. Mm-hmm. Bugbear says. Rock it. No. See, his eyes flash red before flashing back to their normal grayish white color, and he falls to his death. Which isn't very far, I admit, but he's dead now. Bugbear's actually quite tall. 
if I remember correctly, like six foot. That's hence the ten foot reach. I'm going to X him out. X oh, Jesus. and by the way, I forgot. Oh, I forgot to ask you guys about that. Never mind. I will hear in a bit. And this guy takes how much? Five. 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 Okay. So he takes five. Okay, he's looking. He's still standing, but he's barely. He's got cuts and bruises, and he's kind of beat up. The missiles are kind of sticking out of him a little bit, like syringes, and he's trying to pull at them, and it hurts, and it's just bad. They're, they're force. They're force, my guy. Yeah. There's also one dart that goes into him at once. Okay. Okay, cool. That's just from the playable rate. Yeah, that's All the right, one I'm thinking fine. of. All right, so he's pretty beat up. And now it's Sunday's turn. Yay, Sunday. Against this one, the one that's lower on the map. Okay. Woohoo! Okay, 19 hits for three sneak attack. Three plus and, seven plus three, ten. Yeah, okay. He tries, he goes with his sword and tries to block it, but then the sword goes directly into his mouth and out the back of his head. He's Arrow. dead. Oh, sorry. Did I say sword? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, did he just stab himself in the mouth? Because this is going to get like, weird. Get his hand into <laughs> his sword, into the back of his mouth. He's gone. That'd be pretty badass. Cool. That would be. <laughs> I was confused about that because a guy I was playing, I'm in another Discord with who plays uh, Assassin's Creed a lot, likes to throw swords. You can do it. It is a legitimate tactic. However, this is not what he was doing. <laughs> so... That could be an expensive tactic. That's it. That's it? Okay. And last but not least, this guy... He's going to orbit 10, 15, 20, and he's going to attack you. He's suicidal. He's a suicidal son of a bitch, isn't he? Yeah. He's a maniac. What? Monday? Does the 17 hit you? Barely. Okay. Take four points of piercing damage. Well, I'm out. You fall down. Ty, I do have a question. Would it be reasonable to say my mercenary company was sent out with a couple of health potions? Yeah, I was going to have you find a couple of health potions on the corpses earlier, but I forgot. I gave oh. you a 1d4 health potion. That's all right. Okay. Yeah, your instructions of there's be no chugging does not uh, really clarify what you mean by that. Does that mean we can only take one for our bonus action? Yeah, so like, potions are a free action, which means they don't interfere with bonus actions or regular actions, but I don't want you to say, okay, I have a 1d4 health potion and I'm going to drink 10 of them. Hey, that, that's, un that's unreasonable for us to say that, but okay, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I just, I wanted to kind of head this off of the past. Not that you would do that, but I mean, you're a very inventive group. I've already seen you do a lot of interesting, cool things in just a couple I, hours. So, I carry I around a, that. a peg that's full of 1d4 health potions. I did that. <laughs> that just reminds me of what Sunday wants to do in our, uh, in our Saturday <laughs> night game. Uh, that sounds like a fun story, and I'm kind of sad and kind of nervous and kind of whatever else. I'm not a part of it. So anyway, okay. All right. So you got a one d four. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. So now it is. Now it Rex's is turn. Rex's turn. Yeah. Yeah. And then, what's the angle of the dangle on that one? Okay, we're gonna move over a little bit. Isn't he prone? You can take the. I'm on the ground, passed out. I'm. Oh, on the yeah. verge of death here. 
Oh, Not I yet. Guess. Does that work? Yeah, I mean, there's... there's He's there's asking if it hits. Stuff. He's asking if it hits. Oh, sorry. I was... I thought you were measuring for that. Oh, uh, no, it does not. Mm. Does flanking oh. advantage work for ranged attacks? Nope. No. Fortunately, okay. no. That, that does not hit. The only thing it really gives is if you're like a, if you're a rogue and by having somebody next to them, it enables okay. your sneak attack. Okay. That's Actually, interesting information. Don't even think it does I'm that going to with uh, ranged attacks. Right now, I really don't it know does. this elf, but I go. You know what? I need to kill this guy first, and then maybe I'll think about giving him up my potion if my employer thinks it's a good idea. Screams so for help for blowing insistently louder. But I do not hit him. Try to hit him, even though his back is turned. He's like, he doesn't care at this point. He's all sweaty and bloody, and he, he just, he doesn't my care. Passes over. He, it passes over him. He, he doesn't even shrug his shoulders. He's coming to death's door, and he doesn't really care about anything anymore. Yeah, I can so. Since Sunday's down, I do not get advantage. Bertrand, you're up. Fire bolt into the sky's junk. Knock him around. Twenty hit. Twenty hit. You hit him. Awesome. Four. Roll to knock, roll to knock him about four. Yeah. All right. So the fire juts from your hand through the goblin's throat, permeating all the way up his face as if it's oiled and burns his face away. He falls to the ground. He's dead. Egan, if you would kindly make sure this man does not die and need my services, otherwise I will hit him in the head. You uh just Egan <laughs> just here, Egan just go. <laughs> he walks over and pulls out a potion from his belt, opens the elf's mouth, just kind of pours it a little bit in at a time, and the help Sunday you will get. Two health. But uh, I think you might want to stay in the back. As he helps you up. Welcome back to the land of the living. Now let's uh, see to uh, those screams. Let's see what these guys have though. They might Somebody have help something me. They're going to kill us. Somebody help. Oh well. You waited this long, you can wait just a little longer. You Help. don't understand. You can Help. hear somebody trying to use wood on metal, like what happens when you bounce a ball against a barbed wire fence or kick it, that kind of metallic clang sound, like mm -hmm. a light clang. Help, please check these bodies while we go see what's going on. Please be careful, though. And I'm going to head up over this way, because I'm guessing this is where I hear the voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm just going to stomp up there. Not even trying to be stealthy at all. Hold on there. Uh, reveal. All so, right. So we have a visual range of 30 to 60 feet in well-lit conditions? Yeah. So you should probably right. reveal 30 to 60 yeah. feet. <laughs> okay. So... Somebody make a perception check real quick. I don't care who. If you're going to do that, you should always have all of us. Okay, everybody make a perception check then. All right, Cody's got it. Y'all don't bother. Okay, so right here, there's a set of... Oh, I did that wrong. There's a set of arrow slits here and here, which is uh, set off by a pressure plate that stretches all the way across right here. All the way across. I don't see that. Yeah, I don't see it. It's a five foot band. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the measuring tool. Right, sorry. It's a five foot band, but it's all the way across the floor. <sighs> That's more insistent. I'm going to try and jump over it. Roll me athletics. Rex should also roll me athletics as well. Or acrobatics, whichever you'd rather do. All right. These guys have like pull arms or something. 
What now? Do what? Did, so uh, what? Was looking through the body. What kind of weapons oh. do these guys have? Um, they had uh, just which ones you looking at? Oh, the dead Wait. guys. Like a couple yeah. of short swords. That's all. How many arrow slots are there over here? Uh, there are two on each side. And how high are they? Uh, like one is three feet off the ground and the other is about five or six. You know, we could just have somebody on the ground and just trigger it until it's out of ammunition. We could also just put one of their bodies on the pressure plate and have it take care of it for us. Could you or please just jump jump hurry over. up? Somebody says. You will keep your pants on until I'm ready to so, see you. I shout over I there. make it over with my jump, right? Hold on, let me see. There. Yeah, it's all right. No problem. I will climb the wall and just walk and keep climbing until I don't see any pressure plates. All right, right. So over yeah, here. Jump over wait, any pressure plate. Why does it not do that? Okay. It's over here. Oh, I'm not doing it. There either. we go. We don't. There Over we go. here is a goblin. He's chanting. He turns around to see you. All right, charge him and attack. <laughs> roll me damage. Well, how about you roll, roll the hit? Roll the hit, I should say. Roll the hit. Do I hit? Yeah, roll me damage. I'm also using sharpshooter as well. Okay, so... Thatcher's, Thatcher's arrow goes through the back of his head and Egan's sword goes through his torso. He crumples. Like you would not believe. He just like the rips total apart. Th Damn. Okay, so over you here. Your fucking oh, bird. Thank, oh, thank God. You're here. You're here. Over here is a girl in a cage. She's like that ragged, dirty clothes, like dirt is everywhere around here. They didn't keep anything clean at all. It's just nasty looking. Totally nasty. So what's over here? And over here is a get Yankee in a cage who looks kind of dirty. We're not over asking here. about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hold on, hold on. Over here he is be looking for a danger. danger. I know the party is impatient. Hold on. I'll get to it. <laughs> and over here is a small blonde like man he's got a beard and stuff he's only about three and a half feet tall he's like oh thank thank god i i thought you'd never get over here i tried to break the lock but things were a bit too handy for me i didn't wasn't able to do it sorry i just i am so glad you're here are there any more here not that i see that crazy chanter guy was the last one. Here's the altar. Whoops, I did that wrong. I'm going to start inspecting the lock, see if they're trapped. Here's the altar. It's kind of low, but there's like like blood on it and stuff, as if some people had already been sacrificed, but not everybody. Also, the cages are locked. I'm going to start gonna, this body. I'm going to check the locks, see if they're trapped. No traps on the lock. It's just, they're locked. And I will and try I... to undo them. Okay, the body Do has uh, body has a skeleton key as well as five GP. Which you don't really know where he got that craziness. It's in his asshole. I taught the skeleton key to Bert. I catch it. Well, it... I does this these two two sword swords. Uh, mm -hmm. I said two short swords, right? That Sunday's character found? Mm hmm. Something like that. Guys, okay. I'm trying to write this down for you all. Also, a uh, girl and the Gith Yankee run away. The Gith Yankee has a strange 12 pointed star in the middle of his forehead, something like you've never seen before. But he, he kind of like shakes their hands and bows <coughs> his head and just runs away. Before what? I do that, I go, stop! Uh, the uh, still active. They stop. Uh, See what I can I, do. Would I know if any of these guys had a bounty on them? Uh, not really. I think this was more of a 
check out what's what because this is bigger than a simple bounty and we'll figure out the details later. But you know okay. that your people are always good on payments, so you didn't have to worry about that part of it. Now, uh, before you... Also, there is a ginormous statue. Hold on. In this area. It actually matches one of the dudes who's on a painting on the wall over this way. Okay. And Thatcher would know this as the leader of the Order of Knights. This is probably a ginormous statue of Vic Floris Maximus himself. Yeah, damn, and Brutus Maximus. Little plaque, on the little plaque in front of it, it says, What do you give to the truth? I look at it and I go, Loyalty. Okay. Statue of stone slab in the back of the statue moves aside with a grating sound to reveal a secret room in the back. Now let's see if somebody can get the uh, trap disarmed before we continue on. Yeah. And to run the rough side of, all over each other. Alright. It's made a check with the thieves tools at 22. That was a... The arrow traps are disarmed. It's interesting though because of the fact that like Goblins didn't build this at all. And elves, this isn't really an elf thing either. It might be something akin to maybe a dwarf thing or some other kind of like, this is highly mechanical and goblins don't have the smarts for this at all. It's way too it's complex. The humans paid the dwarves to construct it so that way they can hide their secrets beyond. Uh, no, once, if, once the elf says, it's clear, I look at him and go, just be safe. There's still, you never know what's out in the forest. If you wish they'll to wait say, here, they'll say thanks and run off. I go, uh, Bertrand. Mm. Open doorway. <sighs> I go over to, the, to. I go over to the hole. Okay. Whatever secret Look door. Again. In here, I can kind of narrate what's in here. I don't know if you guys... Can you guys bring your... Oh, wait. I can't do that. You can see this, but your tokens aren't in here, are they? They are now. Okay. Yep. <laughs> are all four of you in here? Nope. I know Egan and Bertrand were the first ones to show up. Some of these characters were quite a ways away. I, I, I can move pretty swiftly. Okay. I can move like the wind. I can wind. just copy and paste you. No, it's it's easier for us to drag our characters' tokens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The only reason why I copy and paste is because you guys don't actually have tokens set up. Oh, okay. All right, so in this room, there are six small sarcophagi in this room that are just, like, small, and they're kind of... They have different symbols on them, like lightning bolts or hammers or swords and things of that nature. And there's one really long sarcophagus in the middle here that has a statue of a man who is probably Maximus, most likely, because of how ornate this is. And there's a sword standing on the... just laying on the sarcophagus there. <laughs> Somehow I think the answer is no. Before anybody can do anything, one of the small sarcophagi up top cascades off and a skeleton jumps out. And he makes a beeline for uh, Egan. He says, you fight well. Defeat the <laughs> evil. Go in peace. Wait, what did he say? Sorry. Go in you peace. You defeat the evil. Fight well. Go in peace. And with a skeletal bony hand, he taps you reassuringly on the shoulder. He hops back in his sarcophagus and pulls up the top like somebody yanking a blanket over himself. <laughs> what in the scuba do? Is this no for you? I'm pretty sure no. he just boned you. 
I, I oh, come from a weird place, and this is kind of strange even for me. And yeah. it pops out. And the top pushes up again, and the skeleton says, Search the room. And he I waves, go. and the top slams down. <laughs> you stay the hell in there, or I'll crack your skull. I go up to the big circle. Already and I put did. My hand on the sword. Okay. Uh, I guess we're going to search the room. Can secret compartment in the sarcophagus opens up and you find, let's see, what do you find? I'm gonna put this in the loop. Uh, let's see. 200 GP. A, let's say, a small bag of holding. And two 2D4 health potions. I, if I recognize what a, the health potion, I look at the elf and go, just in case you want to drink, it's a health potion. Okay. I'll take it, but I'm not going to drink it because I'm like, I'm skeptical of like, just drinking something we found in a sarcophagus. <laughs> sarcophagus soup. Mm -hmm. Sarcophagus <laughs> lid pops open again and says, potion is safe. Drink. <laughs> and it just claps down again. You don't keep that lid closed. I'm going to sit on top of it. When you need it. Bertrand, here's one for you. Oh, thank you. Bertrand, the other one. And <laughs> okay, I will the sword. Put, I'll pick, put the uh, gold in a bag of holding. Hold on to it. And okay. I'll go, and I'll pick up the sword. I don't know how to stat this, so I'm just going to describe it to you, okay? Okay. The sword is a... Plus one long, long sword with a plus five to hit and damage against goblinoid creatures. So like goblins, bugbears, those types of things. Okay. Did you pull that from like a uh, 3.0 yeah. manual? Yeah, because that's oh. kind of weird. That, that's very, very specific. That sounds like a very 3.0, 3.5 thing. Like the closest. Yeah. Oh no, we'll talk about that in the in the after action report. Yeah. Always sell the sword. I don't care. I don't give a heck. Uh, Mister, the Mister who uses the sword will definitely use the sword. Okay. Use the sword. I Other use that, the sword. Hold on, let me see what else we get. Oh, God. All right, so anyway. So after that, if you could all... Wait a minute. If you could all drag yourself, I'll drag you over to the previous room. Chingadera. And you hear, you hear footsteps and some jumping. Do we see anything? And this... It's a me. Oh, yeah. The guy, the, the, the young man's, the, beard, the bearded man's beard has actually disappeared now, as if it was never there, strangely enough. And there's some jumping, and it's like, ow, ow, damn it. What kind of fool put this in here? Ow, what the hell? And All the over church here, did me to Well, um... Ow! What the hell? All, all these dead bodies. What the hell? And then I, I didn't put in a token for this. Hold on, let me. Uh, let me a token real quick. Uh, hold mm -hmm. on. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna use, just gonna use a token for this. Wait a minute. Uh, is it showing up? Yes or no? Um, a goblin? Okay. I see this um, weird, like, see. squiggly thing there. Alright, so... Oh, right in front that chick? Of... Oh, you see? Okay. See up there. Right in front of Egan. Oh! Oh, hi! Uh, I'm, I'm searching for a, a young man. You! Where are you? Uh-oh. He kind of... 
and kind of timidly goes over, what are you doing here? Are you a fool? What are you doing? Are you okay? I, I, I didn't know. What? I, I followed you. What was I supposed to do? You know, adventure and all that. What? No, what? And then she says, for those of you who understands, understand Elvish, just because you were an idiot, I'm going to be flogged. And you're responsible for that. I think you should think about that. And you've been, oh, you've been into the dust again, haven't you? You did. What happened here? Is this I, your I, nanny? I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Are you the adventurers? You are adventurers, aren't you? Show me your hands. I put up a big fuzzy mitts. she checks you. You can hold up. I can for the symbol that I mentioned to you mm -hmm. before with the X. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, thank heavens. I, I thought for sure. I am so glad. I am so sorry. My manners. Uh, my name is... I uh, can't remember what I named her. Is bitch make bitch face? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, could you repeat yourself? Because they all or talk to you. Indeed. My name is Morella. I've come from the Queen Between the Lions to take you to her, and I am so glad to see you in an upright position. Because it often doesn't happen like that, unfortunately for us. And also, she there's lilac smell everywhere now. Every stinking where. Ian is kind of... Ugh. That's a little bit strong, don't you think? And Elvish, I'm gonna say, and who's to be flogging you? It's none of your concern, she says back. You, she tries to take him by the hand. Ash. We need to get back, and I have to explain why I found you with a bunch of adventures where you weren't supposed to be. You brought the holy water, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. She gives it, he gives it to her, and she goes over to the strange looking torch over here and douses the hell out of it. I think we have a lot of things to discuss, but I think I would leave most of that to Her Majesty. As far as that goes, I think she will definitely want to see you. Because of the way things turned out. I'm so glad you all are okay. Mm-hmm. And with that, I think that's a pretty good stopping area. Okay. A light whisper to whoever's closest to me. I don't do well with royalty. What in the crap is going on? Alright, so that, uh, that ends the session. Ty? Yeah, we're at a good stopper and it's about 10 here. Okay, I will. We will end here. Oh, by the way, we can, we, can, oh, we can retcon that as far as that goes, by the way. Uh, this Morella chick would have healed you all herself. But you can keep that potion. Okay. Well, since we are having a fluctuating connection. Not too bad. We haven't lost too many frames. Uh, we're going to end here. And we'll catch you next time for Forging the Onyx and maybe another example of Into the Wilds. Ooh. Cool music plays as lights go down 